All right. Get my questions out here. All right. What's your name? Philip Aitman. All right. Uh, how old are you, Philip? I'm uh, 70 years old. Uh, where were you born? Jack, uh, London, Kentucky, actually. And where do you live currently? Jackson County. Uh, 1410 Oak Grove Church Road. Um, what was your childhood like? Well, I was raised in Greyhawk, a little town there in Greyhawk. When I was a boy, Greyhawk was level as far as you could see. <laughs> it was good. We had a good little, good little neighborhood. And, you know, it was really good. A lot of the nice folks around. Just everybody kind of poor, you know, but got along good, you know. Uh, what good. were your parents like? Were you having both your parents your whole life, your my, childhood? Or? My, no, I didn't. My parents, uh, they actually separated when I was fairly young, you know. But I was, I was with my mother. But I was in contact with my dad always. He took care of us all every way, you know, financially and all that. And, and uh, well, still had a good life. Live near my grandparents. Live real close there, and they big influence on them. It's good to have them. Good neighborhood, though. Any brothers or sisters? Uh, two brothers, and each one of us, all three of us, had a sister. And uh, are they still around? Still in contact with them? My older brother passed away, and. Uh, He's been, he's been, he died and he's about 49, so he's been dead a while. My sister passed away. She, she was handicapped a little bit. Did you have running water and power and everything when you were growing up? Or? Running, well, you know, we did have running water and we had electricity, but we didn't have an inside bathroom facilities till, till I got up pretty old, you know. And uh, so it's tough enough, but. You know, it's, it's what it was all the way around. It was, a whole lot of people didn't have that too, you know, as an norm. Right. Nobody didn't pay no attention to it. We burnt, uh, we had coal, coal stoves, yeah. Coal stoves? Burnt coal, yeah. My grandfather, how he was a, on a coal hall, so he knew the access to the coal, you know, and we, we burned coal. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about your uh, teenage years. Yeah, until 1980, I got into real estate. I got real estate license, broker license, and an auctioneer license. And I've so got my little own firm, you know, and pretty quick, and uh, sold real estate in Jackson County. I started it. But it, it's not as fast and as much going on, so it's kind of a part time thing, but I enjoyed it. It was meeting people. Uh, do you have any children? I do. Okay. Uh, would you like to tell me about I that? Got, Two boys and a girl, and I've got five grandkids, four boys and a girl, and I've got two great grandsons, and and one of the fixing the hatch here in April, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a boy too. They say, gonna be a boy. So, uh, what do they do? Are they around this area still? Yeah, every one of them every here mostly. Them? Uh, got one one grandson uh, works. I, the Madison County area, I think, but he, he mostly lives in Jackson County. And with granddaughters in college, she's, she's, uh, what year it is? She's been going to three years. I ain't got too much to go yet. She's about to graduate. And then the grandson just got out of high school last year, the youngest one. And the other two grandsons live right here close, right across from me here. And one of my sons live out here, and his his wife. And the other son lives over uh, near the, not far from the middle school. There, like if you going back on 421, there he lives on the right along in there. So they're all right here, close. We stay pretty close. Yeah. Right. They've helped me play music. The like sons have. Before and they and they fade in and out. They, you know, I burn them out on you. They <laughs> they got other things going on. They have to tend to. But um, I think both of them right now is going to play this festival with me here. This time we'll do this festival. 
another little show or two around. But what are your favorite things to do nowadays? Well, I like to fish and hunt. I still I still fool real estate a little bit, and I got some rental stuff I have to tend to. So, in cold weather, I like to go south <laughs> where it's warm. <laughs> See how this winter weather. Is. Yesterday wasn't too much fun for me. I, too yeah, was, cold. It was very cold. What's your greatest accomplishment in life, do you think? Greatest accomplishment? I tell you, I'm, I think my family's the most important thing, and I've got to rely on I wasn't a do without them, you know. Yeah. My, my regrets, I, I don't know where I've got any regrets, huh? I've uh, done about everything I wanted to, you know. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. good, ain't it? Yeah. So let's get on to uh, String Bean. Tell, tell me a little bit about uh, your uncle. String, uh, String was born in June the 17th, 1915, right here in Jackson County. And uh, he, he liked the banjo, played the music. Of course, my grandfather played a fiddle some, and my dad played the fiddle and guitar. And uh, they play, you know, around the home and things. And Strang got to want to go to the Grand Ole Opry in the 1930s, uh, I think. He he went down and uh, got hooked up with Bill and Roll, played with him a little while, and he got, got, got to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry, playing that banjo, yeah. And he got on Hee Haw a little later, you know, when that Hee Haw show came along. Got this point made him nationally known, really. It was Hee Haw, you know, pretty big. And uh, he, he enjoyed it, just enjoyed being there and playing, you know. He was a character. And uh, he'd come back up in here and fish and hunt, and him and Grandpa and would come with him some and, and stay. They had a cousin named Sam Dude, Sam Dude Medlock. And he never married, so he's a bachelor, and he, they'd come up and camp around with him, you know, so they could hunt and fish and things like that. Bird hunt. There used to be a lot of birds here. Quail, you know. You know. Bird hunt and fish these creeks. And, you know, string, string uh, along about 70, 73, you in it? November. They, they said, guys, he's playing the opera and he come home one night and these guys robbed him and killed him and, and his wife, Estelle. She was a really, really nice gal, kind of really good, really good to us kids too. And uh, they robbed him, killed him. So it went on. It was about 20 years, 1996. Uh, Bill Monroe, new string, and he said they hadn't been done none string up in here. And he said, if you'll start Bluegrass Festival, I'll come help you. Bill, Bill never, he never got to come. He, he passed away before that first festival happened. He, he got, he pretty bad shape, got pretty bad shape. So he never got to come, but his son come up another festival after that, you know. So yeah. And, they, and he's the one who kind of, kind of promoted it, kind of encouraged it, I think. So we started that. I like music anyway, you know. So had this place, so we set it up here. That's been going on. Uh, this will be our 25th Bluegrass Festival. String Bean Memorial Bluegrass Festival. Wow, that's, so, that's quite uh, a few of them. Pretty good time, yeah. Do you remember the very first String Bean Festival? I do. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, it was, uh, of course, it was my first festival to organize and do a lot of work. Uh, How'd that go as far as the organization? You, you, yeah, it's hard to plan ahead for all of it, you know. I remember I, Grandpa and Ramona was really good friends with Strang, and and, and, that, and they was talking about having this one, that one, we put one together. And so I called Ramona, and Strang always called her Ray for Ramona, short for Ramona. There used to be a gal here years ago, played the fiddle named Lola Cornet, and she won a contest one time playing a fiddle tune called Polly put the kettle on. <laughs> so, Strang, if, if Ramona answered the phone, he'd call and she'd answer the phone. He'd say, Ray, could you play me Polly put the kettle on? 
she said, I'll get Grandpa for you. You know, she knows he was wanting to talk to Grandpa. He'd have him bring, her, bring him into the opera, you know. He, he didn't drive. If Estelle was wanted to go, he'd ride him with her. But she didn't want to go and didn't want to drive that night. He'd, he'd call Grandpa. And uh, Grandpa would answer the phone, yeah, yeah, Strang, what do you want? Strang would say to Grandpa like uh, like he was Grandpa talking back to him, you know. Yeah, yeah, Strang, I can stop and pick you up. I'll be right on over, he'd say to him. he just hang up, that's all he'd get out of him. <laughs> hey, he's tough. He's tough, that's the way he was, you know. Well, I called Grandpa and Ramona, and Ramona answered the phone, and I said, Ray, could you play me Polly put the kettle on? She said, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, you know, that brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> I done that. I told her who it was, and I said, I said they wanting to do a, a thing in honor of Strang up home here. I said, I said before I could say anything else, she said, Oh, Grandpa said they're going to do a thing for Strang up home, up, up, up where he lived. Her and said, and she said, she said we want to come. First word, you know, because they they're real close. And I said, well, really, what I wanted to ask you a question, I said, what, what do you think? You know, what's the pros and cons? Well, I need to watch out for you, you know, and thing. <laughs> she said, well, she said, it's a lot of work. I underestimated that big time, you know. It was about twice or three or four or five times what I thought she'd have meant. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work to put it together and contact all these people and stuff. But everybody knows Strang, you know, and they and around the Opry, they, they loved him, you know, and they they just like family, you know, and he haw too. Uh, 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 Archie Campbell, see that picture over hanging crooked? Yeah. That's the first picture Archie ever brought on that. Kind of a late in the evening there, a wintry looking time. But Archie drew that, and that's a that's a print off from it. And Phil Campbell, that's Archie's son, he come up and helped us some too, but but all these guys, they they was uh, they was buddies and string, you know, it's easy, See. easy going, easy to get along with, and and uh, they was all a lot of it. So, and Porter come up and helped us do this thing. I got over him, Porter, and that's a picture of of the first Bluegrass Festival we had right there, and that was Porter unveiling that statue right there when he come in to unveil it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grandpa. He got Grandpa up there beside of him on that statue, and so he said, "Well, we, Grandpa, he's back turning his fool with the strings on that banjo a little, and he was catching his composure. You know, it's it's pretty hard for him." And Grandpa said, "What do you think, Grandpa?" Porter did, and he said, uh, "He said, uh, oh, he said he." He's kind of reminiscing to himself. He said, I he never thought they'd have done something like that for him. He said he wouldn't have ever, never thought nobody had done something like that for him, you know. And uh, I say his characters now. Porter told a story. He said, uh, uh, Grandpa and, and uh, Strang had bought a farm there and, together in Tennessee there in Goodlettsville. And uh, and uh, Grandpa went to New York to work. And he was working up there. And, and Strang and Jerry, he wasn't doing too good, you know. And so Grandpa called him, and he knowed he'd be wanting to sell him his part of that farm, you know. <laughs> he said, he said uh, Grandpa called, and he said, hello. And he said, he said how's everything down there, Strang? Uh, he said, it's bad here. He said, you can't hardly give land away. He said, <laughs> set him up, you know, by his place. This stuff like that. They just always something out of them, you know. So how many people do you think showed up at the first one? Buddy, I don't know. We never had no head count, but we had people. From, Roughly. We had, I, I, we, they said my thousands. We had people from uh, a lot of different countries, Germany and uh uh, Japan and all, I'm telling you, and, uh, out backwards, that uh, Australia and, 
and Canada and everywhere and all over the United States here. There's people from every state about it. Of course, uh, uh, a lot of people know Strang, you know. And, and uh, what do you think your favorite thing about hosting the festival is? <laughs> well, I really met a lot of nice folks, you know, just the good country people. People like this bluegrass music are down to earth, and they're just country folks. They like bluegrass music, you know. You don't. They're not. Um, they're not into much, you know. They're not. It's a peaceful thing. Family like sitting, you know. And then getting to meet all these people in New Strang, you know, they all treat me really good. They're one of them. Well, that first year was pretty special, you know. Had all these guys come in, Porter and Grandpa, and getting to see them all and visit with them, and the support, mm -hmm. the support we received out of it, yeah, from the entertainers. And, uh, can you tell me about some of the entertainers that have been here? Uh, we've had, I mean, about anybody that's been much of a name has been here, you know. Um, Jimmy Martin, I see, he, see picture him there. Uh, Ricky Skaggs, Doyle Lawson, uh, um, I'm getting a little old and a little slow at talking. I'm slow I remember him. Grandpa and Ramona was here that first year. That picture right there that was took with Grandma and them, that was took with George Farrell, and he entered it into a state contest. And uh, there's a, a place in Kentucky, and he won first place on that, and they showed it all over the all over the United States, all over the Kentucky here. Ralph Stanley and uh, Mac Wiseman, little Ralph was with us. Ralph, those boys, uh, uh, Gold Wing Express, them boys come in. They the story behind that. They the fired up bunch. Uncle Jack Suttles was a friend of Strings, and he, he'd always play, come in and play, and he wouldn't actually know, but he was a good, good guy. Can you, can you give... Uh us a little teaser what's in store for the festival this year we've got we got a really good show lined up we got uh, larry cord will be here he's uh he's a songwriter and a pretty big blue guy sky he's legend like larry sparks will be here uh, and uh grandpa jones is his great nephew and um uh, um just a bunch of other pickers. We got, um, <laughs> give me one of them flyers over here. <laughs> and we'll send one of them with you when you go, or a handful of them. Uh, Laurel River Lines, a little local group here that they're out of Jackson County and, and Laurel County. And uh, when they were, some of them when they were kids played here on some of our contests, you know, and they got, they a pretty slick little bunch, but Sean Lane and his sons will be with him. He plays for Blue Highway too, but he'll, just him and his sons will be here for that. And uh, Kentucky Just Us, that's a little young bluegrass group that's from Kentucky here, and tough from, tough from wet leather. And, uh, uh, Gary Strong's out of Hawaii. Oh, wow. He's up around uh, Cincinnati there and does some. Uh, he's on WOBO radio and all that. And he's got a good show. And then we got two little boys there called the Anglin Brothers. They was just little guys. But they grow up bigger and they'll do an interesting show. That's nice little boys. I've cut their hair when I was barbering. They just little guys come in and sit on this seat on top of this thing here, you know, when they're little. Now they're getting up. Uh, probably 16, 17, I forget. The oldest and the youngest was probably 13, 14. But they were really, I didn't know they picked for a long time. Finally, we was having a show and said something bad, and his mommy told me they played a little music. Bluegrass. I said, Bluegrass, yeah. So they come and done a, done a thing. Anything else you'd like to just share it about? The festival? Well, it's, it, it's an exciting time. It's good to bring a cheer. Sit in the shade and listen to some good. You'll be working if you're here, but you if you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy being right. here. Is there too. camping? Yeah, camping. We got. And how's uh, that going to go? RV with the uh, RV camping with electric and and water. We got um, 
showers and restrooms, you know, and uh, and we we don't have full hookups, but we got uh, got plenty of water and electric. Any kind of food vendors? Or? Yeah, we have all kind of food vendors and other vendors too. Some arts and crafts people, and uh, they'll they'll come in. We we like having them too. Yep. Ah, you were you you're good, buddy. <coughs> yep. Some of you guys come in early. They, some of them will come in the, like like the Saturdays or Sunday before, you know, and stay all the way through, say a week, you know. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. yeah it's, so, I mean, if it's a festival. It's a festival. Yeah, you know? they like it. They and they'll jam. There'll be people uh, that'll be gathered around their campers, uh, jamming, uh, bump, gather up, you know, all over the place. Yeah, that's awesome. It's really neat. Yeah, um, you don't know by not what I'm talking about jamming. Did you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gather, you know, gather and jam. Yeah. So, is there yeah. anything about life in the Appalachias that you would just want to share with everybody? Uh, just anything <laughs> you want to throw out there about life in the Appalachians? Appalachians. It's a laid back area. A little don't run hardly up. It's fast living, you know. But it, there are a lot of good people, solid, you know, and uh, work hard. A lot of people really work. They work or got a lot of work ethics and a lot of good people, you know. Of course, people make mistakes anywhere you're at, make bad choices. And me and you made a couple. We're not going to talk about that right now. You know, we made a couple ourselves. I repented and I hope you <laughs> But we won't talk about that right now. So, um, but it's a good area. And, and uh, of course, Jackson County is... Uh, about 40% of the county is in National Forest, Daniel Boone National Forest. So we're a little bit, uh, you know, loaded up on the on the forest area, mm -hmm. but uh, it's still nice. A lot of pretty places here. You, know, you got A Street there, and you got Turkey Foot recreation areas, you know, and uh, and Flat Lake Falls, and they've got some campsites there too. But uh, all right, so and, uh, one one more time. Uh, what's your name? Philip Aikman. All right. Thank you so much, Philip. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed this. this You're a good great. man, no matter what they say about it.